After the successful hydro at John's house, I headed right back over to Joe's where I was able to sandblast the boiler. After conferring with Don Youngling and Kevin Satch, I purchased the paint and primer for the boiler, smoke box, and other areas in the locomotive that would eventually need painting. From there, my focus turned to the running gear. There were a number of items that have needed attention for some time, so I took advantage of the boiler being off the frame to address those concerns. What started as a quartering project turned into a bearing replacement and quartering project. After the initial quartering was done, one of the old bearings seized. It was necessary to press the drivers off the axles again, replace the bearings, and then go back to Ed Younglings to quarter the drivers again. In these photos, you see the jig that Ed created to quarter drivers on the locomotives that he builds. The jig verified that the number one driver was spot on, but the number two and three drivers needed adjustment. The offset keyway shows just how far off the drivers were. With new bearings on the driving axles and the drivers properly quartered, I was then able to turn my attention to the brake cylinder. With the cylinder off the locomotive, I was able to do some troubleshooting. The problem was that I was never able to get a good release after a brake application. I tried plugging existing ports and then created a new one. The results are self-evident. The wrist pin had become a regular maintenance issue. Examination of the crosshead revealed that a old helicoil repair was coming undone. In reality, it was a poor design that was not holding up. New water-hardened wrist pins were made. John helped me with drilling out the crosshead to accept a wrist pin with larger threads. Joe made a nice looking castle nut to go on to the new wrist pin. As it turned out, the home brewery burner tips did not work so well, as I was not getting full combustion of the propane. Three of the old burners were left in place. Dale was having good success with his conversion to duckbill tips. Twelve duck tips were added. They provide plenty of turbulence within the firebox to get good combustion. I returned to Joe's for assistance with creating the new bushings. With the drivers being out of quarter the way that they were, the bushings had become egg-shaped. Spuds were created to measure the rods and find the centers. With a plan in place, new bushings were cut from bearing bronze. The bushings were parted off with the bandsaw. The OD was made true in the lathe with a special fixture that Joe made. After the bushing had been pressed back into the rod, the ID was cut using a reamer. The new bushings are five thousandths over the crank pin. With the quartering and the rods trued up, I wanted to go ahead and take up some of the slack between the bearing blocks and the frame. Using several feeler gauges simultaneously, I tested various sizes and determined what size shims would be needed to take up the slack.
Painting was by far my least favorite part of this project. It requires a lot of cleaning, scraping, degreasing, more degreasing. It's like there's five hours of prep work for every five minutes of painting. The good news is I had some great helpers. Elijah and Paul made fast work of cleaning the frame. Once everything was ready, I needed to get the frame into the backyard for the primering and painting. The most direct route was through the living room. This is likely the closest I'll ever get to silver spoons. I made use of the kids' playground in the backyard. I spent a little extra money and purchased a nice respirator. That was well worth the investment. I rigged up a system that easily allowed me to rotate the frame that made the process go quickly and smoothly and I was able to get good coverage in all areas. As the various parts were completed, I would put them aside awaiting reassembly. Okay, now clear your fingers, Eli. I want to do this too. That's fine. And then go ahead, Paul. Cool. Okay, so go ahead and stop. This and is going to. Now, uh, Eli, go ahead and switch the direction. Remember how to change the direction right here? Bring that forward. What do you guys think? Are we going to Train Mountain? Yeah. What do you think, Paul? Yeah. All right. Joe, this would not have happened if it weren't for you and oh, Don and Dale. Silly, yeah. It was your drive that made it go forward. Give yourself the right credit. 
been a fun project.